Life isn't always fair or pretty or even nice. And while we all have problems, there's no rule that people have to accept the negatives they're handed. For instance, 20-year-old Kyle Maynard's in town this week, and we're pretty sure that his problems would cause many people to just quit. This special young man was born with severe limitations, but the fact that he was the visiting speaker in Cleveland's Town Hall series this past Monday shows how he's battled back. Kyle also spoke to a group of high school students here at the Idea Center on Monday and then spoke with me. What we all observed from this unlikely athlete is the face of determination and a prime example of never giving in. But, but I, I knew in my heart that I could do it. Kyle Maynard has never thought of himself as being special. He doesn't want handouts. He certainly doesn't want pity. He only wants to be thought of as normal. Normalcy for anybody, I think, is just... Uh, especially somebody with a physical disability, is, is trying to, uh, to live life without a bunch of adaptations, a bunch of changes away from, uh, from the norm. And, and that's the way that I try to live my life. But he is, as you see, physically challenged. He was born with congenital amputation, a condition which affects only one in 2,000 babies and which is generally limited to a part of a limb that's missing. I don't have a clue about it, to be honest. Yeah. And, and I guess most people don't. I, I don't know. <laughs> I just haven't looked into it. That's something that, I don't know, for whatever reason, I've, uh, I've avoided. 100 teens from five area high schools came to the Idea Center to hear Kyle talk about his passions and his mission, inspiring, teaching, and serving as an example that obstacles are only to be overcome. Which obstacles? Try this. Go, go, go! You go. Yes, Kyle Maynard is a wrestler. In high school, he was ranked top 12 in his weight class in the United States. That came only after he'd played several years of middle school football. His folks, who have three younger, full-body children, saw Kyle's following in his father's steps as a wrestler as a confidence builder. My dad got me into the sport, actually, and, uh, and once I was in there, he, he tricked me into coming back again. Uh, my whole first year, I didn't win a match. But they said all along, my parents said, you're not going to give up and quit. You've got to play the whole season. And uh, my dad, he, he tricked me. I said, <laughs> The next season, he said that he didn't win a, whole, a match his whole first year. And I didn't find out until about like nine or ten months ago that that was a blatant lie. But it kept me going at the time. I was 11 years old and making the most important decision of my life mm -hmm. to date. When you go out there on the mat, you said to me that people look at you and you can tell right away from their eyes either they think they can take you easily or they're afraid. Right. How tough is that when you look at somebody and it's like, you think he doesn't have respect for you? No, well, any wrestler has that, though. Any wrestler, any but you step out there, you can look at an opponent's eyes and you can read almost exactly what they're going to do before the match starts. And I can, especially with me, though, because I know if I look in the, you know, your eyes before a match starts and I see that you're tentative and you won't stare back at me, then I it's know yours. that you're going to back away. Is that like a metaphor for life? Use somebody's own fears or their own strengths against them to achieve what you need to achieve for you? I to a degree. I think wrestling's a little bit more malicious than the real world. Yeah, though, I hope. But uh, yeah, I think uh, that carries over into uh, you know into like business as well. I mean, if you're going into uh, a meeting with other investors and you can sense that fear on somebody else that you've experienced from wrestling, I mean, then you know you know something's wrong, and right. you can kind of carry on and and fix that problem, you know, just because of the the, the heightened awareness and things like that that you'll earn on the mat. We talked with an audience on hand, 15 members of the Olmstead Falls High School Bulldogs wrestling team. In the midst of a successful season, it was readily apparent their time listening to Kyle Maynard will last far beyond this year. He said that if you believe in, what you, in anything, you could do it, and it's so true. He, he went to states, and he has like no arms, no legs, and he's... It's, it's amazing what he could do. Kyle is such a great example of hard work. I mean, re wrestling is such, there's so many obstacles in wrestling uh, as it is, who, with the competition that you need to go up against. And here's a young man who's uh, overcome so many obstacles to, to still be successful. I think he's got a lot of great examples and, and stories to tell kids. As we go into the heart of our season, I think the obstacles we have ahead of us kind of gives us an idea that, you know, the continued hard work and the perseverance when you hit a bump in the road to recover and continue on because I'm sure that he had a lot of bumps in the road on his way to, the, to his success as well that uh, you know once you get through those bumps and, the, and you persevere that uh, you know there's a silver lining at the end of, in that tunnel. You talk about help from your parents and your faith in God. Tell me about those two things what they've done to make you who you are. 
I would say if you combine that with uh, my experiences through wrestling, uh, those, those are the three biggest things in my life that have changed me and molded me to who I am today. My parents, early on, uh, taught me to be a normal kid, to eat with normal silverware. I type on a normal computer. Like I said, drive a normal vehicle, have normal relationships with friends, girlfriends, whatever. And uh, you know, my faith in God has carried me through a lot of tough times because I definitely do get down at some points. Mm -hmm. and, and the confidence I've learned from wrestling, it, without that, you know, the things that I've learned, the trials I've overcome, if you can go out and, like I said, beat somebody on a wrestling mat you know, and, and impose your will on that person, then uh, yeah, there's, there's no greater challenge in the world, I assure you. All the people that come through your appearances say, wow, what a role model. Tough living up to that? Role model is kind of a, it, it's a tough thing for me to accept because, mm -hmm. like I said, that normalcy, that's, that's, that's what I'm after, and, and uh, I'm so fortunate and grateful for all the media exposure that I've been able to have, but uh, you know, that's the only way to get the message out there. Do you feel like a champion for other people who do consider themselves disabled or are physically disabled? I try to not, not, not champion for those people because they've got to be their own champion. Mm -hmm. People have got to wake up and realize that every day is going to be a struggle. It is for everybody. And for somebody in a wheelchair or with, you know, an emotional or psychological disorder, it's that much more difficult. And uh, just to try to teach people like that, that you know, you can't give up when times get tough. And if you make excuses, you've already lost. A message not lost on his impromptu audience. Fans of both his grappling skills and of the way he has grappled with life. Being a wrestler for as long as I have, it's uh, given, me, given me a good foundation for starting a now life as an adult and I think that just the leadership and just being able to persevere mostly over everything is the best part about it. You get emotional when you're talking about a lot of the things that really you want to stress to them. Yeah, I'm passionate about it. I, I mean I speak about it a lot but it doesn't change the fact that I believe in what I'm saying. It's, I know a lot of speakers, speakers are up here talking to kids uh, or adults or whoever mm -hmm. for they're allotted 45 minutes to an hour, whatever it is, and then you're gone. What I'm trying to leave is a lasting impression that someone here could take away and say, this helped change me to some degree. And if I can do that, then it's worth it. You know, if, if one of these guys goes through and on their way to the state tournament or at the state tournament, pulls out one match with 10 seconds left because of some message about perseverance, then it's worth it. Is that something that's going to carry with them for the rest of their lives? And that's something that, to me, that I'm, I'm most, most passionate about sharing. And those stories and things that I experienced, I don't, I don't hold back on, on that. I don't, I don't have anything to hide. And, and a lot of it is emotional. I was very emotional my senior year in wrestling, and, and I still am. I still compete. I'll leave it there. Great place to stop. Kyle Maynard, thanks so much for being here with Thank Ideas. You. Maynard continues wrestling even today at the University of Georgia. To hear the entire interview with Kyle Maynard, go to our website, click on Ideas. You can also find links there to Kyle's site and find information on congenital amputation.